Hello everyone, welcome to this next episode of our STL series Cues. In this video, we are going to discuss the Cues operation with the use of STL. Q is a very, very interesting topic. Why? Because it is used to solve a lot of programming questions. At the same time, it is very easy to understand because we can directly relate it with our real life routine. So here, I bring to you a very classic example of a queue outside a movie ticket counter. In this queue, it is important to observe that the person who will be entering this queue first will be the first one to be out. And the person who will be entering in the last will be the last one to be out. So, every queue follows the funda of first in and first out. The person who will enter first will be out of the queue first, also called as FIFO. First in and first out. Also, it is important to note that every queue has two ends, the back and the front. Uh, any new person, any new person or element can join the queue from the back. And a person can exit this queue from the front. Now, let's have a look at how the queue data structure looks like. A queue data structure also has a back and a front. Any element can enter this queue from the back and they can be removed from the front. Let's see how can we define a queue in STL. So we write queue, the data type of the elements that we want to store in the queue, let's say integer and the identifier that will represent the queue. So we can define a queue like queue, the data type and the identifier. So here it will create a empty queue which can store integer kind of values. Now let's have a look at all the operations that we can perform on our queue. We can push the elements in our queue. This push function will insert the elements from the back of our queue. So if I want to push one, this will insert one into our queue. If I want to insert say two, this will insert two at the back of my queue. Similarly, three, four and so on. There's another operation called pop. This function deletes the element from the front of my queue. So if I write queue.pop, this will delete one from my queue. Now there's another operation called size. This function returns me the number of elements that are present in my queue. So currently this queue has three elements as one is already removed. So the size of my queue will be three. There's another function called front. This function returns the element which is the front of my queue. Currently the front is two. And similarly, there is a function called back. This returns the element which is the back of my queue. Currently in this queue, the back is four. There's another function called empty. This function returns whether our queue is empty or not. This returns true if our queue is empty and it returns false if our queue is not empty. Now let's have a look at all these operations using our code. To use the STL queue, we need to include the queue header file. Now let's try to declare our queue and insert some elements. So here I have declared my queue, queue which will be a empty queue and it will have a back and a front and currently the queue is empty and it can store integer kind of data. Now when I will write queue.push10, this will push 10 into my queue. Similarly, queue.push20 will insert 20 from the back of my queue. Similarly, 30, 40 and 50. So after all these commands, my queue is now this. Now let's try to get the back and the front element of our queue. Here, the back of my queue was 50 and the front was 10 and that is now printed. Now let's try to 
do the pop operation. The pop operation is the delete operation. It deletes the element from the front of my queue. So let's try it. Here, when I did the pop operation, the front element which was 10 is deleted. So the front of my queue is now 20. So when I printed the front, the new front which is 20 is printed and the back remains the same. Now let's try to calculate the size of our queue. The size function gives us the number of elements that are present in my queue. Let's try this. Here, the size of our queue is printed as 4. Because 10 was deleted, only 4 elements are now left in my queue. So the size of my queue is 4. Also, let's try to print all the elements of our queue. Perfect. Now all the elements of my queue are printed. Here I used a while loop to check if my queue is empty or not. If the queue is not empty, then I printed the front element of my queue, which here is 20 and I popped. This will pop the front element and my new front will become 30. It will again check if the queue is empty or not. Again it will print the front element, which is 30 and it will pop. So 30 will be popped and the new front now becomes 40. Again it will check if the queue is empty or not. The queue is again not empty. So it will print the front and it will pop. Now the new front becomes 50. It will again check if the queue is empty or not. It will now again print 50 which is the front and it will pop 50. So 20, 30, 40, 50 will be printed. Now all the elements are popped, so it will again check if the queue is empty or not. But this time the queue is empty, so it will come out of this loop. And we will get all the elements of our queue printed. In this video we saw the syntax of declaring our queue. We also saw how can we insert the elements in our queue. And how can we print the front and the back element of our queue. We also saw how can we delete our element from the front of our queue using the pop function. We also calculated the size of our queue, the number of elements that are present in the queue at that particular time. We also printed all the elements of our queue using the while loop. We also checked the use of the empty function. This empty function returns true if the queue is empty and it returns false if the queue is not empty. I'm sure that with the help of these operations, you will be able to solve a lot of problems which are based on queues very easily. We'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye. Keep coding.